Alright guys, TouchCrop back again today, I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far, and today a number of interesting topics to run through, the first one of which being Los Angeles Thieves. Past weekend, actually a week ago today at the CDL Kickoff Classic, they got kind of destroyed by Optic Chicago in that exhibition match. Since then though, things have not exactly been looking up for them, getting bodied by New York Subliners supposedly in scrims yesterday against Optic Chicago also was not pretty as we're going to look at in the coming minutes here. That does raise an interesting question, this team on paper should certainly improve as time goes forwards, Considered by a lot of people to be a top four team in early online play. Now it does not look like that has been the case over these last couple of weeks of play. How well, how long will it take them to improve? Will they even improve that much over the course of the season to be a point where they are championship contenders? Once again, like we probably expected to see from a caliber, well, a squad of this caliber, especially given what 100 Thieves did back in the Call of Duty Black Ops 4 season. Intrigued to get your thoughts in the comment section below. Like if you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe if you are new as always. I'd greatly appreciate it. Really helps out the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing that. Still, of course, plenty of time for these guys to turn things around. The season hasn't even kicked off as yet. Krona CDL Intel says the following, John is streaming this weekend's Challenger Cup. Gonna talk about some interesting things about the Challenger Cup later today. Raising money for Movember, so really cool to see Gunzi, Noisy and Machilla he was teaming with this past weekend. So pretty cool to see John back on the competitive circuit at the very least. Will he get into a pro team? Who really knows? Scrap says we've got people thinking I'm running ATS. We talked a few days ago about auto sprints. People are well accusing Neptune of using it. Supposedly Scrap's also being accused of using it as well. So, well, a lot of people saying these pros, if their movement's too good, they must be using auto sprint to enable them to do so. But um, at the end of the day, if you really get your button combinations down, you can probably do it than other people can do it. But yeah, pretty interesting to see that this discussion's still going around. No solution as yet as to how to maybe, if it is GA, to disable it in CDL play. So someone can't just flip it on and abuse it for the benefit of their team. Also interesting, the XM4, right? There was a lot of discussion. We'll talk about it in a few minutes time as well around where the XM4 sits right now. I was watching scrims a couple of days ago. People were still using the XM4 and the Krig, but as of last night, a lot of people were using the XM4. As Paul X says though, I've been turned on so many times because I try and jump with it. Honestly, with the XM4, you just have to be a burger and stand still. Like, you can't do anything with it or your aim goes absolutely haywire. But um, the, the XM4 is clearly very strong right now. I mean, the AK-47 got a while ago, and it seems that several weeks down the line, the XM4 has now taken over the meta once again. As Sky says, I missed the Krig, but forced to use this XM4 because it is just way too good. So, who really knows what's going to happen here? If the XM4 just completely takes over the meta and it's just XM4 and AK74 use, then, uh, well, what are we going to do about it? When are the pros going to GA it? We talked about it a few days ago. It hasn't happened yet, but, um, well, maybe you could argue it is only a matter of time. So, let's talk about how some of these scrims went. So, Clayster was actually streaming some scrims. I mean, this was up against the Seattle Surge. As you can see, 250 points to win. Seattle getting kind of bodied here on Moscow Hardpoint, 235 to 41. We thought this was pretty bad. I mean, wow, this New York Subliner squad looking pretty good with Mac seam and diamond coin in the squad as it stands right now but oh well Seattle Surge and Octane was talking in some videos how they've been looking significantly better these last few days improving quite a lot so certainly a lot of teams improving right now squads like the Paris Legion as well taking a lot of maps of Optic Chicago in scrims which is pretty impressive given uh, what we maybe expected from that squad coming into the season at the very start of it but New York obviously improving quickly if Hydra is able to get out here to the states that's probably going to be a very special beneficial thing for them this was uh, well he was playing in the European Challenger Cup some pretty nasty clips coming out from Hydra right here on the checkmate control as you can see so I'll just play this on screen for you guys real quick in the background at the very least as well he's kind of bodying people with the XM4 we just looked at switches over to the Rafika or whatever it's called in this game and it well demolishes with a five kill spree so whenever he's able to get up to the states that probably is going to be a step up for this uh, New York squad but still looking relatively good in these matches regardless but that 250 to 41 or it was 235 to 41 but I imagine it ended soon after that was not the biggest bodying we saw of the day that was on checkmate hard points between Optic Chicago and and Los Angeles Thieves. I mean, that matchup that they played uh, the, f the past weekend was not close at all. 251-36 on Garrison, 6-4 on Checkmate Search and Destroy, and then 3-0, a comfortable one in the control. But uh, well, they kind of repeat the trick right here. But as Clayster says, they were scrimming against Los Angeles Thieves as well. That being the New York squad, and uh, well, a New York squad which has only recently been put together. They're still kind of learning the ropes, exactly how they're going to play with each other. And Los Angeles Thieves have been teaming together for quite a long time at this point. And apparently, Clayster, they just ate 800 Thieves, beat Paris 7-1, 
one and then split four to four with Dallas. So obviously they're looking very good, this new New York squad. In this online environment, I think, uh, well, uh, it was Zuma on Crowder Hours, the podcast number six, not too long ago, saying that how well he thinks that New York are actually looking very, very good right now. But at the same time, Los Angeles, Steve's that have been touted, okay, they're a top four team. It's, uh, well, at some point, we were talking about to get this Dallas Optic Atlanta phase and then LA Thieves kind of being the number four. It certainly does not look like that's the case right now. Getting beaten 8 supposedly by that New York squad, which is still relatively new, and then also getting absolutely destroyed by Optic Chicago, as we're going to look at right here. So 6-2 map count yesterday, not an absolute disaster by any means. I mean, they win the garrison, they win the crossroads, but what you will see right here is on Raiden Checkmates getting absolutely demolished, right? And in the controls as well, it wasn't looking so good. And yes, this is scrims, right? And maybe Checkmate is just a map that uh, they want to veto out of every series. I definitely don't think it's a good idea to have like a perma veto or something, because let's say you're LA Thieves, you always veto Checkmate. It's just not a map you like to play and therefore you weren't really trying or whatever. In the scrims against Toptic, we'll look at that in just a second here. But let's say you're LA Thieves and you do just auto veto Checkmate every single time. What if you play a team that also is awful at Checkmate and they don't like it at all, but they happen to be really good at Rage, which is let's say your second worst map, then all of a sudden you get put into a difficult spot where if you auto veto Checkmate, you're just going to get demolished on Raids, whereas really you should probably still have Checkmate in your arsenal of maps that you can actually be competitive on and play. Who really knows? But still, 250 to 38, it's just a scrim at the end of the day. Maybe something was going wrong, they had connection issues. Who really knows exactly what happens? But at the same time, it's not something you'd really expect out of a squad like 100 Thieves or LA Thieves to be, well, not as competitive as this. As you can see right here, I'll put it on the fill screen. 250 to 38, not something you see every day, even in scrims. Here on Checkmate Harp, when all the Optic guys were playing from the Hex quarters in their world proper setups, they're going to be playing the matches in once again and did play the match against LA Thieves last weekend. But still an interesting question, right? Because we look at this squad, Slasher, TJ, Kenny, Temp, big names, a lot of talent on this team. And um, you know, they're obviously having a difficult time of things right now. How long will it take them to turn around? Will they ever be able to turn it around? That is an interesting question because last season I thought, okay, up to gaming Los Angeles at the start, they might not be so good. By the end, you'd imagine they get pretty solid. And that is true. They did get very solid by the World Championship. They all almost beat Chicago Huntsman at champs in that game five, round 11, one versus one, TJ versus Envoy, that Envoy ended up clutching up in. But so far this season, they just haven't looked very good. And this is certainly a team you'd expect to improve over time. But you'd expect um, you know, a team with Slasher on, team with Kenny on, to at least be competitive at the early part of the season. But I saw some power rankings coming out from people saying, okay, Los Angeles Thieves are like ninth, they're like 10th right now. Because, um, well, at the same time, you've got to look at Optic Chicago. They're not exactly demolishing everyone in the scrims they play. They played Paris a few days ago, had a more difficult time. Paris took several maps on them, but they're, well, kind of destroying LA Thieves still in scrims. And of course, in that uh, opening matchup of the exhibition matches, they also had their way with them, right? So it does ask the question, okay, how good actually are Los Angeles Thieves? Are they a top four, top five, top six team like people were expecting them to be this early in the season? Or are they actually, well, much worse than a lot of people thought they would be? And how long will it take them to get better? I still think they'll certainly get better over time and should certainly improve. The names on this team do you know what? Well, they speak for themselves, let's be honest. But you do have to ask the question, is the current formula they have with Temp and TJ in the team, is that going to work out perfectly? Are those guys are quite the players that they need to be for this team to perform at the highest level? You've got Draza sitting on the bench. You've got many other uh, talented amateur players out there as well, which maybe if this team composition isn't working so well, you might have to go down that route, right? Because there's some names on this team. Certainly, you can imagine some friction is going to be caused at some point or other over the course of the cycle if stuff like this continues. I can't imagine there well, the, the vibes in the Los Angeles Thieves camp were too pretty after losing this one and getting 40-point club to Optic Chicago, who in theory, well, well, could be one of your main rivals this season. And maybe we'll be going forward. So I'm intrigued to hear your perspective. Do Los Angeles Thieves need to switch something up? Do they just need to kind of stick through it and they'll improve over time? But uh, well, clearly right now, they're not exactly the squad they were hopefully expecting themselves to be. Thought this was an interesting discussion as well here on Reddit. The, the formal usually uses the Krig on Moscow and Checkmate. That's all I saw a couple of days ago. But now everyone's just using the XM4. Does raise the question, how long is it till the XM4 just gets GA'd and we're back to a Krig AK-74 U-Meta? Or do we just do it where somehow like um, you know, one player on a team gets to use an XM4, everyone else has to use something else? That's how I would like it to be done. If we can't get a personal preference meta where the XM4 is just too good, maybe they nerf it somewhat, right? Maybe we have discussions with the developers to say, okay, nerf the XM4 by just a slight touch to mean we still can have a three-weapon meta because I really don't want to have another two-weapon meta given that we've quite enjoyed a nice meta these last few weeks with the XM4s and the Krigs all being used in the xs 74 u of course, as an SMG. So definitely some questions to be answered, I think, here over the coming days. So this is the squad, of course, TJ Halley, Kenny, Slasher, and Temp. I mean, when it was announced, obviously, well, pretty good squad on paper, all things considered. I think they were trying to get Priester on this team, but uh, they had a difficult time given the, all the drama that went down behind the scenes with the Optic Gaming purchase and buyout and then selling on to Los 
Santoli, Steveson, Nature over there. This I just wanted to look at with Slash's tournament results these last few seasons. So certainly he's a player that, well, his teams tend to improve over time. Early season, you're never expecting them to be particularly good. You can see right here, Ojale was not good at all. They did get better over time though, especially when they moved out to Texas right to the end of the season. Similar thing in Black Ops 4, they were pretty tragic in Las Vegas. They just about qualified for the Pro League, made the change for Priester, and then, well, had a pretty dominant run to the end of the season. World War II, we see a relatively similar thing where early on on Envy with Temp, it didn't go to plan. Then he joins Rise. Now, well, things all come together for that squad. And Kenny, of course, was also phenomenal on that title. So Slash's teams certainly tend to improve on the time. I wasn't expecting them to be a top team in the game already, but at the same time, I was probably expecting this squad to be top four, top five, and over time competing for top two, top three. Right now, it does not look like that's going to be the case. I'm intrigued to hear whether you guys think they should switch anything up. And of course, now we look at the pools right here. We're looking at Dallas Empire and we're thinking, okay, are Dallas just going to have their way with this group. What are Los Angeles Steve's going to do here? Because Rocker are very solid. Surge maybe have been looking better and better. New York supposedly been looking pretty good in scrims. And only the top three of these groups get out to the winner's bracket at stage one, right? So you're looking at LA Thieves in theory thinking, okay, no problem. These guys should qualify without too much difficulty. But some of these other squads right now, okay, Parasite and Royal Ravens, who knows how that's exactly looking. Rocker seem very strong. New York supposedly have been improving pretty rapidly as well. So we could even have a situation here where Los Angeles Thieves are well in the bottom half of this group. And if that's the case, compared to Group B and the talent over there, they're certainly in the bottom half of the league. So just to finish off with an interesting question here from the Cod League, who was your standout player at the Kickoff Classic? There were many players that come to mind. I think that Bance was an especially good one in what he was putting up in the hard points. But again, certainly you wouldn't say any of the Los Angeles Thieves players. But intrigued to hear your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, I'd greatly appreciate a like on the video. It really helps out the YouTube algorithm know you enjoy this content. Other people like you may enjoy this content as well and upgrade the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you for watching as always. Take care and I will see you next time.